So guys, update 4.0 is on its way and there are lots of little changes to the UI and also some big changes as well as a new hero. We've got lots of stuff to get through. The new stuff coming out to Vainglory will be on its way pretty soon. Let's take a look at the uh, first few things. There's been a couple of UI changes, the friends list has been changed and also the chat system has been rewritten apparently to be more reliable. So that should mean chat system between your friends, chat system in parties and hopefully chat system in draft lobby as well. So all of that has been rewritten to be more um, reliable. Also, if you go to the play screen, you'll notice that they have changed the way that a lot of the game modes look and they're all separated out like this. Now, this is going to be the change that I think a lot of people may be concerned with. Um, they've kept casual 5v5, they've kept ranked 5v5, they are going to be keeping permanent modes of Rumble and Blitz. They have got rid of 3v3 casual. It is now only 3v3 ranked. So... I assume this was a decision taken because 3v3 casual was probably not getting played a lot and they wanted to increase the 3v3 queue time um, matching. Sorry, they wanted to decrease the matching time for 3v3 and therefore they've just said, well, I, we know people love 3v3 ranked, so we're just going to keep that in and that will try and consolidate the 3v3 queues. If you're a 3v3 casual player with a bit of ranked anxiety and you don't like playing ranked, this might make you a little bit anxious. Um, but I think you, you, we kind of have to just get used to the idea that there were just way too many game modes in Vainglory, and that meant that the player base was so incredibly split on every server that it was very difficult to find A, good matchmaking, and B, uh, even find a match in suitable time for a mobile game anyway. So whilst I think some people will be upset with this, I think it's probably a better change to help increase the reliability and sustainability of, three, of 3v3 as a game mode. So we're going to talk about San Feng's abilities now, and then we're going to do a little bit of gameplay of San Feng himself. He is the new hero coming to Vainglory. His passive allows him to grant a fully fortified health bar every time he casts an ability for two seconds. Huge damage reduction there. His A is Tiger's Bridge, which is a charged counter, which allows him to dash to his opponent after he has charged it. If he takes damage, he can move while countering and then stun at the end of it. Divine Fist is a charged skill shot that deals magic damage, which, by the way, if you look at the numbers, I'll talk about them in game, but they are ridiculous right now. And Master's Lesson is his ultimate, allowing him to do an AoE piece of damage whilst also stunning heroes and then knocking them away. Right, so I want to talk a little bit about Sang Feng's ability, his B specifically, Divine Fist. I have no doubt in my mind that these numbers are going to get tweaked before he goes live because his ability at level 2 deals a ridiculous amount of damage and it's on a fairly short cooldown and also it's quite a large skill shot, so difficult to dodge. Um, it's really the only ability, I think, that gives him a viable CP build path. I don't think he has any other viability in a CP build path other than, other than his B. And the scaling still has weapon power scaling on his B. So I, I think in general he's going to be a better weapon power hero than he is going to be a CP hero. He just doesn't have the scaling in his kit to make him super powerful in a, a CP variant. However, he has very high base damage, especially on his B, which means Broken Myth in the CP build is going to get a lot of effectiveness out of it. So I max B right now simply because it's broken. I mean, it just does a ridiculous amount of base damage. And this there is no way this makes it to live. If this makes it to live, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life because Sang Feng's B ability on the PBE right now is absolutely broken. I mean, just look at the damage that does. Just one charged up B. Um, but that's kind of how his B ability works. You saw then just how I used my A. Um, essentially, I charge it. If I take damage, I can move, and then I can dash to the closest enemy that I target, and I will also stun them. If I do not take damage during that counter period when the small shield is around him, it looks very similar to Catherine's uh, Stormguard banner. I will... Uh, not be able to stun my opponent, but I will still be able to dash after I've charged. I will also not be able to move in that time. Look at the damage that thing does! Oh my god! Sorry, but his B is just ridiculous. I, like I said, if, if this makes it to live, I'll be very surprised. So I like to build him a, a very specific way. Weapon power right now, that I've kind of, kind of been testing a lot of build path variants, but I quite like Serpent's Mask into Spell Sword into Bone Sword, and I'll tell you why that is. I think Serpent's Mask is really good. He's got quite high basic attack speed, so he's going to get uh, a lot of efficacy. Oh my god, that's just a ridiculous ability. He's going to get a lot of efficacy out of being able to sustain with that, um, as well as the fact his fortified health works really well with lifesteal, so every time he casts an ability, getting that fortified health is obviously really good with your lifesteal side of things. Um... 
I then think Spell Sword's good because he's a very ability focused weapon power carry. So remember, you get uh, cooldown. You sorry, you get the. Um, the fortified health every time you cast an ability, but also you get, uh, when you overdrive it, two seconds of not being able to uh, take any debuffs. That is his ultimate, by the way. A good combo is to use your A to dash to an opponent to set up for your ultimate. Jump in with your ultimate, you pull everybody in, it sets up for a massive one boy combo. It's also a ridiculous ability. Um, yeah, and in general, I think he is going to be a very, very strong hero. So I hope you kind of got a like, little bit of an idea about how he plays. Uh, like I said, he's a very ability focused. He gets so much out of overdriving his abilities. If I were to overdrive two things in his kit, it would be his A and his B. The reason I would overdrive his A and his B is both of them have exactly the same overdrive bonus. He gets to ignore debuffs for two seconds. So if any of you saw that Twitter clip where he absorbed the Gwen ultimate, that was because he had overdriven his A ability and he was able to ignore the debuff and then he took damage from it so he was able to go and stun her afterwards. So you don't actually turn her stun around on her you actually have to overdrive your a to make that ability work but you get the same ability to ignore debuffs when you overdrive your b and honestly i think this is he's just broken i think he's going to be absolutely ridiculously broken on release and i think you'll probably see him banned almost every game um i think he's much better weapon power but i think i can talk a little bit about his cp build path like i said the weapon power build path that i like to run is above the cp build path is fairly low cp aftershock focused you need to get that cooldown reduction from the halcyon charges because he's a very ability focused hero um, and then it's all about the spell fire which scales with itself and then the, the broken myth which allows you to penetrate resistances with the high magic damage coming from his b um but honestly i think i think he's probably going to be better weapon power it really depends on how they uh, they change those values on his B because they are just broken right now. Okay, I want to show you some of the skins, uh, and these are going to be the new skins coming out to four heroes in Vainglory. Two of them are going to be for Varia. One of them is this one here, which is Athena Varia, which is very much sort of Greek mythology. I mean, it had to happen at some point. I was waiting for them to do a Sith Lord Varia, but I don't know if they'd get away with it. They'd have to do like Dark Lord Varia or something and make it look very Star Warsy with red lightning. But yes, this is... Um, Athena Varia, again, Greek mythology focused. She's a, a legendary skin. She's had a lot of ability uh, recover, recolors and redos. She's got some ability animations added in there. And she also has basic attack animations changed. Well, the basic attack color of her animations changed as well. But overall, it's uh, essentially a remodel and recolor of most of her abilities, uh, making her more... Uh, sort of lightning-like, you know, traditional lightning-like, not the blue th tint that Varia has on her main skin. And again, if you're into sort of that Greek mythology thing, this skin will definitely be for you. I, I really, really do like this skin. I think it's awesome. Um, I'm just showing you in detail a couple of what the abilities look like when you're able to use them. Uh, her lightning bolt definitely looks like a proper lightning bolt. And her ultimate also, you will be cooling down sort of those sort of more true lightning color bolts from the sky. I'm going to show you very briefly Ares Varia, which is the seasonal edition version of this skin. It's essentially just a full recolor. You've got a recolor of the model, including green hair and the red dress. And she shoots like a red tinted lightning, sort of an orange red tinted lightning. So slightly off color from the normal Varia skin that you see there, the, the Athena Varia. So the Ares Varia is just a little bit different, slight recolors on all of the abilities. And it is the seasonal edition version of this skin. But I don't want to show you too much in detail because it essentially has all of the same things that the Athena Varia has. Next is the legendary Dragon Catherine. I think Dragon Hunter Catherine. I'll have to double check on the uh, on the name for you. It is going to be Dragon Master Catherine. Sorry, guys, I kind of mind blanked. So Dragon Master Catherine, legendary skin, and this is going to be available on the third week, I think. Um, when it comes out. So this will be the third week after the patch has been released. She has got some full ability recolors. Uh, she has got a cool kind of dragon flare animation on her stun, her relentless pursuit. And she's also got a, sort of a flame shield now with her B. And she has a, a pretty beefy flame wave ultimate when she uses that ultimate as well. Kind of sad that it didn't summon like a dragon shadow or anything, but I don't know how hard that would have been to uh, to animate. 
Again, just going to show you in a little bit more detail what Dragon Master Catherine looks like. That cool sort of dragon stun fire animation on the back of her Relentless Pursuit. Uh, and you've obviously also got uh, the really cool looking flame shield as well. Look, you know, looks fairly similar to the Storm Guy Barrier also, but you can see she's had a full remodel on most of her kit. And she also has like these extra flame animations, which I think really look really nice. And again, that huge ultimate blast wave, which uh, looks really, really cool with all of the flame animations added in i think she's gonna i think i'm gonna try and get hold of her because i think that skin looks really awesome and finally we've got a uh, feathered anchor which is an epic skin uh this has got some uh ability kind of updates you can see some sort of feather abilities added in otherwise the the model is is fairly similar to anchors already however but she's had some recolors to some of her abilities and also you can see quite a lot of feather based animations added into her abilities as well which is really cool for an epic skin it's actually quite a lot of effort gone into this epic skin um often you don't see this much effort going into to epic skins and i think they've done a really good job with this one and i think um it's it kind of adds a skin that really changes the way that anchor looks and plays because the current skins that she's got doesn't really don't really do that uh, and this one is kind of a, a big shift and i'll just show you in, in a more cinematic way you can see those blue feather kind of particle effects coming off the abilities which look really cool happens with all of her abilities as well you can see with her ultimate it's a large amount of feathers drop down to the floor and when it returns you get those feathers uh, and as well as her a will drop some feathers when she jumps over and her b also huge feather spread when you throw that b out right that was everything that the new update has to offer hope it's exciting hope there's a lot of cool stuff coming um i know there is a little bit more coming to 4.0 that i can't talk about just yet but i will be hopefully next week so uh, i hope you guys uh enjoy and i'll see you soon